I wanted to show a few things. So first of all, there's jankfree.org, and this has a collection. If you go to jankfree.org, um, there's a bunch of resources on jank busting. Um, but there's this first bit here, this JS Confi U slides, uh, and there'll be a video eventually. It's a uh, me yammering for about 30 minutes on how to use tracing. Um, so if you don't get enough from this, but uh, there's some fun slides on there that show you some corner cases that you can open up in your browser and try to profile yourself. Uh, the tools will probably crash on you, but uh, you know, in the long tail, uh, there's some good demos to understand why we use this tool rather than perf, uh, rather than printf's to study performance. Um, I, I think this is one that I want to actually show. So this is a, a page that you go, hey, this is this is smooth, right? Um, nice, happy, 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 good, fun times. And uh, if you go into tracing, um, and I'm going to do a performance trace, so I'm going to turn on these things over here, um, and I go back to this, and I stop. Never done this demo one-handed before. Um, what you'll see here is this looks regular. So jank, jank free, you should see these regular patterns, right? This is a smooth page. It's happy. Um, if it's if it's not jank, if it's janky, you'll see other patterns. And the thing to look here is uh, browser main here is is where we're running blank, and the browser thread here is is janktastic. Um, so there's this V8 call function, and it's running at all sorts of different things. Why is this? Why is this looking so smooth? You, you might say, and this is this is uh, Ian Volek and company's Magic CSS animations running. So this content here is uh, a CSS animating thing. It has a WebKit animation on it. So that's running on the impl thread, and you can actually see that by going to here. And if you look in the compositor, you'll see these light gray things. And hopefully, usually when that's happening. Oh, I know it would happen. If I start this again, and I do this, and I reload, then what you should see, this may not work, you should see an animation running. Usually if there's a CSS animation running, you'll see a little thing here next to this set visible saying animation. And that would show you, hey, CSS animation running. Um, the other thing to sort of note is you'll see this thing here, this annotation saying be mean. Uh, and if I open up the, the code for this, and I go to my sources. I've got this be mean thing, but you'll you'll also notice that I've marked it up with these console.time and time end calls, and uh, that puts a trace event into the into the tracing system. So if you have a a piece of code and you want to understand how that relates to the rest of Chrome, this is a great way to do it. It's really great when you're coming into the stack too, and you're like this blink thing's a beast and it's hard to understand. Um, and you can you can even put these in different parts of your code, so you can. Do a B mean start, and then in another function you can end it, and it'll work. Anyway, that's kind of a fun, I think fun, fun for me demo. Um, here, by the way, is a nice, super simple, smooth page. So if I go back to here and show you that, you know, this is this is a gorgeous, gorgeous page. And this is this is sort of the definition of smoothness. Is you'll see all of the threads are nice and regular, um, and you'll see here there's the scroll offset which shows us where we were in the page, and that's moving up and down sort of with with your finger, and it's there you know it's happy. Um, so that's that's some stuff on that front. Um, so what I wanted to show here is just some other tooling that we've got. So uh, me bring up. Actually, I showed this sort of in our our getting going. But if I go to like uh, Google.com and I record, and now I decide, no, I don't want a trace event. I want I want some frame viewing. So frame viewing lets us study things. We could say like I want to search for cats. Scroll down. Um, these green dots are when we render. And so, uh, you know, on a bigger screen, this works a little better. But you can see, basically, these are the different frames that we make. And this is me typing into the search box. And the UI changes to the new page. You can sort of see this is the recording of what I did over time. All these red things are us repainting. Remember we talked about repaint storms? 
lot. So those are the repaint storms, and you can click on them and be like, what is that? And it'll say, oh, that's an invalidation rect. Um, but it gets kind of fun, right? I've, I've shown that you can sort of tilt this, and that's, that's pretty cool. Um, a lot of people ask, like, uh, and, and oh, so you wonder what these, this sort of detail around the frame here is. That's the Chrome viewport, and as you scroll the document, that's showing what we're, what we're sort of uh, doing and a lot of people ask so what what's getting into memory so the the Chrome system is giving memory to the stuff around the 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 viewport with priority and then everything further away from the viewport gets less and less and less memory and if you want to know who who takes priority this is sort of the answer to that so these are the priority fields uh, that are being given out and you can click on these these individual units and see for example oh this is you know, we think that it's basically, it's so far, it's off screen and it's moving away from the screen, so the time to visible is num max, but it's pretty close to the screen, and we want it to be high resolution because if it does show up, we want it to be crisp, versus if I go down to some tile like this, uh, we know the scroll's going in that direction, so the time to visible is, is 11 milliseconds, and so we can use that to do reasoning about stuff like hey, we've got 11 milliseconds. Last time we painted this layer, it took 50 milliseconds. So we should probably put that tile into low res mode when we go to paint it so that we don't checkerboard there. So anyway, uh, you can get a lot of out, out of this tool. Um, and by the way, this is all JavaScript, so all y'all know how to write JavaScript. So if you want to add features to this, you just go over to traceviewer.googlecode and you contribute patches and we will LGTM them. Final bit I want to show is the SCIA debugger. Um, actually, no, a couple more things here. So people wonder how much memory is this using? If you go down here, we are using seven megabytes on that layer. And then there are other layers here. So all these have different memory usage. So if I click this, I'll get different memory usage. So this is using seven, that's using something, etc. cetera. Uh, I can click any of these, and you'll see this prominent view in SCIA in picture debugger button. And I showed this too, but this basically gives you a breakdown of all the ops in the that, that Blink issued to the graphics context and that we recorded. Uh, and these are all the ops that we're doing. So let me see. I think this link here is to something that's really slow. Yeah, so this, we all have joked about drop shadow before, right? So this is a, as I scroll this, uh, the, the, they just move, right? So I have an on-scroll handler that's like moving these around. And, uh, you know, in the old school mode, we can, we can sit there and show paint rectangles and maybe I'll hide my FPS meter. And as I scroll this, you can see it's turning red. So we got a paint storm here. So option A is we somehow, you know, not have a paint storm, but that, that's not the point of this demo. The point of this demo is to do this and then scroll, stop, and we wait. Oh, come on. There we go. Hate when that happens. And you click one of these, and you're like, hey, I wanna I wanna debug that. And so then you end up with, let me just pick one of these. So now we have basically these ops that make up that layer, and you can step through and see, okay, this is how Skia paints these. And then we have a white background, which cost uh, 0.09 milliseconds. And then we have that, which is a whole millisecond on this quite fast MacBook. And then we do more work, and then we put the bitmap in. And a lot of people are sort of like, well, maybe it's the clipping of the bitmap to round a direct, and that's slow. But that's like really kind of a non non issue here, right? The the thing that's killing you is this uh, that thing, right? Uh, so anyway, this takes some of the guesswork out of um, big paint times. It's kind of cool. Uh, try it out. And if you need to like, if you see something that's terrible, you can always take this and uh, export it, and that'll download it, and you can send it to Philip Rogers, who loves these kinds of things. Just joking. But yeah, send it to us and share it and stuff. And the same goes for traces. So, um, you know, we we have a joke. It's 
kind of a mean joke, but we're basically like tracer. It didn't happen, right? We'll have somebody that says, uh, "Oh, I went to you know theverge.com and it was terrible," and right. And we we basically say, you know, totally, we we want to work with you. The way to do it is to do the thing that you're complaining about because it's probably terrible, and then send us the trace. And you you know you save it and you plop it off into a mail to us, and then we can have a really concrete discussion and say, okay, yeah, you're talking about the event at 1.3 seconds on worker pool four, right? And then that gives you a really productive avenue to debate with somebody, especially when you're working sort of cross, cross country, cross seas, et cetera. Um, that's about all I have on the tracing ecosystem. Uh, anything else that I should talk about? Any questions? Oh, do we have documentation? There's like, uh, you can, yeah, you're, he's totally right. We're like almost grown up here. Um, you can do Chrome. Uh, I think you can do like Chrome tracing. Uh, and you can Google that and you'll get this thing, which will tell you quite a bit. And under here, there's some directions on how to get a trace out of Android, which will work. Oh, which is the thing I didn't talk about. So our, yeah, our Android tracing tool is particularly beefy in the following way. You remember in some of the discussions we've talked about CPU being a sort of uh, precious resource and we're worried about, uh, oh, we just moved this to a thread, but there was no CPU to run it. So in Android SysTrace, and this is documented also on this site, um, it's a different way to get a trace, but what you end up with is both the stuff that I just showed from Chrome and a detailed dump of what the kernel was doing, like the raw Linux kernel. And so you get things like this stuff up at the top. And what these are, are the CPU and what the CPU scheduler was doing. So for example, at this point, the CPU one was running this sandbox process. And I can mark that and go down and look and see, oh, that, that was this. And that was running this thing, which was did swap buffers complete. And so that's interesting because I can see what was running on a CPU, uh, which is great when you get sort of the my machine was running hot kind of report. The other thing that's really cool about this is you can look through and you see these uh, see these little colored bars above, above every thread? Um, that's thread thrashing. So what's happening here, green means it's running on a CPU. So that means that if I go up here, this is, this is running on that CPU. The blue here this thing, it says, if I click it, it says runnable. And what that means is that it, it could run, but it's not on a CPU. So if I go up to the CPU, I can see this is running something else. So if I, they're both purple, but this is sandbox process 5034. This is sandbox process 5029. And if I go down, it descheduled me to run this thing here. Right? And this is really important because when you're doing a, a smooth scroll or something, you don't want to lose your CPU. Right? You, you, this sort of pattern here where we're losing our CPU is hurting this. So this looks, you know, I could file a bug and go, dude, you know, draw frame is like a pig, right? Um, but what's really going on is it's not draw frame being too piggish, it's, it's losing um, like half a millisecond to uh, this IO thread, right? So this is the other half of performance, which is you've got to think you're sharing a machine with all these threads. And uh, you can get this on Chrome OS and Android. And it can really be useful for some of these uh, types of optimization experiments. Now I'm really done. Any other questions? Yeah. You're always there. Uh, it's a great question. You mean the, uh, the, the kernel tracing? Uh, nobody's tried yet. Uh, on Windows, you can get this data with event tracing for Windows, and it comes out um, as XML. And the, the, the trace viewer project, the, that code has pluggable backends for importing, so it knows how to import a Linux trace and a Chrome trace, and it can smash them together. So somebody just has to write the crap that gets both, and then write the crap that takes XML and parses it and uh, turns it into this same model. Uh, Mac has something actually uh, similar. And I have sort of a half done thing for that. And it's just, you know, we have to do the work. Um, 
Yeah, if anybody has a long flight home. <laughs> Uh, the, the hardest part is uh, what's called clock sync. So kernel tracers typically use uh, something different than um, uh, get time of day. They're, they're timers that are only available in the hardware that, that are not safe if you're not a kernel. Uh, and so what you end up with is two recordings that are in two different clock domains, and then you have to do something called time warping, where you, you sort of go, well, you said it was this time, and the kernel said it was this time, so now we're going to... It's a pain in the butt, but it's possible. Uh, and that's how we, it sort of works in some of our builds. It's just a, you know, and, and most of our work has been on Android, so that's why we're kind of happy with the situation as it is. Um, not happy, that's overstating it. Okay, I'll shut up. So Alexei, did your build finish? Awesome. Um, so, um, a first disclaimer, I've actually, it's to, about presenting a tool that Intel is making, but I'm not a, a power user of that tool yet, so I actually discovered it a few months ago, so I'm sorry if I don't have all the answers, but I can, worst case, connect you with somebody who has the answers. Um, so Intel developed a set of tools um, such as compilers and, and also profiling tools, and one of them is VTune. Um, of course, these tools are working mostly on, if not exclusively, on Intel CPUs. Um, but the cool part of it is that it brings you an additional uh, help to profile and, and fix problems in C Intel CPU platforms. So, <clears throat> unfortunately, I will not be able to demo as good as I wanted to because my compilation is not finished, but let's see. Um, I'm gonna. Okay. So, <clears throat> so Vitune works on 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 uh, Windows and Linux. Uh, it doesn't work yet on macOS because we simply didn't have customers to uh, push for it. And so uh, it's a proprietary tool, so you have to pay a license for it. Unfortunately, it's not open source. I potentially think that you can have a free version if you're a student and work on open source project, but I'm not very sure. Um, so this uh, profiler helps you to profile various things, uh, CPU usage, uh, uh, threat contention, and power usage, and, and stuff like that. So the way it works is you can create se uh, several projects here on this navigator. So I have one which is Chromium Content Shell. You can also create a project that actually runs Chrome itself. And, and and as you can see on the bottom, I have one with uh, about uh, a crosswalk with it's one project Intel is working on on top of Chromium. Um, so um, it's very easy. It, we don't need to. Uh, so we already have landed the support of VTune inside Chrome a while ago. So uh, there is not much you have to do to actually build it with the support. There is a jib defined, but it's not mandatory. As let me just, uh, let's see. I, it's impossible to remember that flag, so I need to look it. Um, um, I is this one. So as you can see here, it's a jib defined that you need to set, which is a Chromium enabled VTune JIT for V8. So as I said, it's not mandatory. If you don't want to uh, profile V8 JIT with VTune, then you just don't need to set up that flag. You can just build 
and it will just fine. Uh, if you want to be, sorry, if you want to analyze just Flink, we don't need to pass any special flags. We can do yeah, unless unless you want to unless you have like a performance problem on, on on JavaScript, and then you said, I mean, what is it? And then you want to get V8 detail information on the JIT, then then you want to get that flag. I mean, it costs nothing to always set it on. That's what I do. Um, uh, the only thing you have to do is, so when you create that project, so you can just create in the button new project and then you set up it, but I'll, I'm going to show it to you, the, the one I, I just created. Um, so you can put here the path of the application you want to run. So in my case, I'm running Contention, right, in release. And so I just picked a random website on Gadget. Um, you have to disable Sandbox because um, if you don't, then Vtune won't be able to um, analyze the render process, right? Um, you can, if you want, you can uh, profile a given process, but you can also ask Vtune to pro to profile everything, all the child processes of the content shell, right? Um, and then you need to pass enable Vtune support as the command line, right? That's the only thing you need to do for Vtune to work. And so on the bottom of the project settings, oop, um, you can see here on the advanced tab, you can say analyze child processes, which means that in that case, when you, run, when you will run Kotor Channel, it will also profile the runner process. But if you check it out, then you will only uh, profile content shell itself, right? So um, on this tab, you need to specify where are the outputs. I believe you can find it by himself. And then here, the source, you don't need to put all this path, but. So if you do, OK. And then here, there's a run button. So you just run the button. It will, t it will launch you an assistant. And so there are various analyses you can do. So basic art spot, that one is just like, it will tell you the, uh, the hot spot, like top hot spot from like the slowest one to the, uh, to the, um, to the fastest one. Then advanced, where you can do some filter. Then there's concurrency, so you can see if uh, threads are blocked and so on. And processes are also blocked. Um, and on the bottom there, that I unfortunately can't, show, uh, unfortunately can't demo, because in fact, I was not expecting to do demo VTune, so I'm actually running this in, into a virtual machine. So uh, CPU is not supported. Uh, uh, su like, we can profile the power usage with the VM, virtual machine, on parallels. Fortunately, Parallels 9 allows to you to actually do all the profiling that is on top because Intel has a special set of instructions that Parallels supports, so you can even profile on the virtual machine, which saved my life today. <laughs> so if you click Start, then you will start the profiling, and then we'll see potential showing and loading uh, on gadgets. Exactly. Uh, I picked a trunk that is pretty busted, by the way. Um, it's locked like this, and then at some point, it will finish to load the page. And it works out of VTune, by the way. It's the same. It's not working out of VTune. Uh, if I stop, like, we will at some point finish to load. It was not even compiling before I first built it. <laughs> Somebody book, the Chrome extensions. <laughs> uh, I will just have to wait. Damn it. Okay, so we'll just stop, I think. So if you stop the profiling right now, so it takes a bit of while because it's in the virtual machine, but then it's pretty instantaneous. It will start processing the, the, the back traces and, and all the traces that did. And then you have, so you have the time we spent on the demo, then a few uh, uh, top up spots. Obviously, um, you always, uh, everything that is related to the event loop show up on the top, but it's like, um, uh, because it's the event loop, it's the most code functions. But anything that show up on the top shouldn't be there. For example, the web font info render style for strike. I don't know why it's there, but it shouldn't be there. Um, so 
if you go to the bottom up stuff here on the tab, so it will loads here and you get a bunch of information of what's going on. And <clears throat> so it exp I mean, I don't need to go through every detail, but like it's pretty well explicit. Like each each color on the bars, it actually tell you uh, what was CPU was busy. The, the 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 gray one was like either. So there's a lot of time where it's either. And then, unfortunately, which I can't demo because I I forgot to build with uh, my role is built with dash G. So when you click on a function, for example, let's say we click on uh, this one, it will jump to the source code. Right, which you won't do right now, and then each source code will tell you each block of uh, in, um, of assembly instruction. But also all these um, little bars that you have here, all these little bars for every single uh, uh, function call of inside the function you are trying to profile. I wish my build was finished, so it would be awesome to see. But <laughs> um, so yeah, and then you can actually debug um, and start to figure out why it takes so long time, why it's, it's long, and then for each every single function, you can see okay what, what exactly is slow inside the function, and and pretty much it. Um, on the bottom, you get information about the threads. Um, you can also filter by process, by thread. And that is a lot of stuff you can do with it. I, I, I know probably 5% of it. <laughs> um, so pretty much, um, funny enough, people who are talking about the fonts, and they seem to show up quite a lot. Uh, so yeah, that that's pretty much it. Um, I, I, I wish I would have time to prepare a very awesome demo, but like I, I, I just didn't have time. Um, I will tell a story where I actually use Vitin successfully. Uh, back, I don't know, maybe a month and a half ago, I was uh, bugged by the performance team because I, 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 there was a 45% regression in, in a Windows test, a, a, a perf test of web of Blink, and it was only happening on Windows. And so I, I used Vtune on Windows to actually figure out what was the problem. And it happens that um, Windows, or actually Visual Studio is not very smart when you uh, copy a uh, 16 bit struct and that I actually found out by by digging uh, it was actually showing on the top uh, hotspot the exact function that was doing the copy of this 16 bits uh, struct and then I, I looked the, the, the assembly code the exact line of what was wrong then I, I googled a bit like what, what was the what was this instruction doing and then figure out that Right, that was very slow. It was actually triggering a very slow path on Intel CPU, as I believe also on AMD CPU. So I actually, thanks to VTune, found out how I could work around this copy and, and just pass by reference in that function call. So then it would avoid copying. And and so that was very successful. I don't know how I would have done without VTune on Windows, first, because I'm not a Windows guy, and secondly, because I don't even know if you can profile properly on Windows. Uh, so yeah. That's pretty much it. If you have any questions, maybe I can try to answer, but. So just one quick question. Um, I haven't used VTune 2013, but is it, is it useful if you have a call graph mode where you could compile it and it would give you, like, in addition to finding the hotspots, it would tell you what path the code took to get there? Yeah. To find critical paths. Maybe. It yeah, I believe it's still there, but I'm not very sure why you can actually find it. Maybe it's a different. Um, you used to have to recompile an instrument of code. To yeah, I, I I really don't know that. So um, I, I know that, for example, uh, when you click, when you create, when you want to to make the um, um, the profile, what, you know this list with all the profile types that you want to do. I know that you can even this basic hotspot you can ask to show it in a different way than than this drop down list with time basically. So I I don't think they removed any feature. Uh, the, the big improvement from the previous version that probably used is the UI completely rewritten. So, so, so yeah, I don't I don't believe they removed any feature. So it's it's very similar to I don't know if people are familiar with instruments on Mac. It's very similar. It it gives uh, it gives the same information and even more I believe. And and for me on Linux when I hack on Linux I I, I really like it because. I have a hard time to use other tools. I like visual.
So you can also, um, uh, I forgot to say, but you can also just like any uh, debugger, you can uh, create the project like this Chromium content in a way that you uh, can attach uh, to a process. So for example, you already run your Chromium and then you want to attach to uh, to the render process and, and to not get information of the browser process, then you can just create the project in a way that it will attach automatically using a uh, reg apps name and then will attach so you can only profile the browser process and not get any problem with, you know, maybe synchronization issues or something like that, that are maybe false positive because you're doing testing. And, and, and so yeah, you, you can actually really profile WebKit itself. So this is really cool. Um, I'd also mention that Simon Hatch recently added a profiler to telemetry for VTune. So you can just run your benchmark with dash dash profiler equals VTune. It'll start the recording at the right time, save the output, and then you just open it in the UI. Um, so uh, what's what's useful to go to from here? Um, do, do folks have like specific performance questions about tooling? Um, sites we'd like to demo, uh, look into a page load time, break into smaller groups and, and look into performance problems? Oh, you did. All right. <laughs> Let's try it. James, you want to come up and assist us, maybe? <laughs> this is going to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Do we want to use your computer? We can no, no, up. you can use the URL. OK, I just have to like remember my password. Use okay, a leg. It has to be exactly that what I was doing. Yeah. How well can I site type? <laughs> yeah. All right. Do we want to look at load time or scroll or do scrolling. Both? scrolling? All right, we got it. So somebody while while we're doing this one, think up one to torture him with. So somebody <laughs> somebody find a better page load. All right, so here we go. Uh, so tracing, record. Let's see. So it's it's janky. Now mine looks a little different. Is it just because of uh, uh, that thing that we do? Like, like I mean, that's. It really kills the mobile, but it, you can still see it's pretty janky on. On, on the on yeah. Well. This is yeah. You're right. This is this is heinous. I just zoomed out and it seemed to get worse. Okay. Uh, let's see. So I just scroll up and down. All right, so usually what I do is I hide the browser process first, and then I look here. And uh, so then we look at the renderer main, because that's sort of the business. And uh, ah, OK, so, so here we see begin frame on main thread. That's us, the compositor thread, telling the main thread I wish for you to tell me about the world. Uh, and then that does several steps here. Uh, way buried in the left here will be us very briefly. This is hard to do with one hand. Uh, here? No, that's just cruel. Uh, <laughs> I do. Oh my god. Well, so here's, here's WebView Animate. So you all know Raph. That's all. Hey. All right, so this is Raph here. Oh, man. Come on, bro. You can do it. OK. There's WebView Animate. So that's Raph, and it's like crazy cheap. It's like, so that's not running, probably. And then there's Layout, which is, uh, or no, that's Animate Layers. So that's us running CSS animation. Somewhere here we should see Layout. Here's Layout. It's cheap. But if it wasn't, then we could throw in stones at like Ojan. Um, blame him. Uh, so now we're into the compositor. So this thing here is CC. So once you're in layer tree host, you're in search CC. And that's like kind of long, kind of really long. 
And uh, oh, and one comment is I have cheated. So remember we told you, we told everybody about, um, I'm running Chrome this way. So we, we run Chrome differently on all the platforms. And so I always have an environment flag uh, that which the, 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 the critical ones are these, which put us in what we ship on Android. So this mimics better. So if you whip open your MacBook, you'll get more what we ship on Mac. Uh, this is closer to what we ship on Android. Sometimes it breaks on desktop because we're not shipping it yet on desktop, but bleh, whatever. Uh, so, okay, so the, the problem here is there's a picture record uh, that is heinously huge. Um, and then there's some business here, which looks like more. So that I see all of these implies to me that there's lots of damage. So this is the point where we'd go to the frame viewer. So this is clearly the bottleneck. Um, one other thing that we'd check here is you can actually see this is uh, this is drawing. So even though we got heinous performance there, the compositor thread seems to be valiantly trying to scroll the page up and down. I'm not sure why it's failing. So we'd want to look into into that probably too. That might be Mac. On, on, a, on an Android, does this smoothly scroll and is slow to respond or it's terrible, period? It's terrible. Period, okay. So I think frame viewer is the next, the next right thing to do. Um, now we're into super risky. Wait for this. This might, this might crash the tool. We'll see. Oh my god, it worked. That makes my day. <laughs> it may crash anyway. Uh, okay, so we got a, we've got it turned into layers, and we've got a couple huge layers here. That's just tiny. There are actually very few layers. So there's that. There's uh, maybe a few others here. Where's oh I see. There's like a little layer there. And when we scroll this. Is the you know I don't see a layer for the um, for the uh, yeah so this isn't getting so let's bring up DevTools here for a second and, and and use this to help us so I'm gonna hide paint rectangles yeah oh and it's root responsive that that silly thing pop it out that thing there see how it doesn't have a border around it. So that's not getting promoted. So let's fix that. We'll make that big. Is that it? That's it. Let's just hide it. How is it now? Did this cure your pain? Still chunky. So let's look and show. We have bottlenecks in it. It doesn't say bottlenecks. So this would show scroll bottlenecks. That's a good one, dude. Oh, but that's fast. Let's look at paint storms. So I think what I would do is figure out why it's repainting all the time. Um, ooh. So it's painting. So let's see if there's an on-scroll handler on the body or prevent. Event listeners. Oh, good call, Tom. Joint effort. Anybody have any ideas? Throw it out. <laughs> you see anything, Tom? I, I, you would see a scroll, right? There's one yeah, periodically. I mean, those paints are just terrible. What are they doing? You think these? Ooh, you know what? Hey, check this. When I'm here, it's a lot worse than I'm over here. What do you think? Uh, so, I mean, if it's, if it's like emblem location your mouse pointer, then I start suspecting like hover. Pseudo elements, yeah. Or, or, but, but, but yeah, I guess. Uh, so, like mouse over events or, or skip or hover. Yeah. Or We didn't. You're right. It's probably not. It's probably not that. Maybe there's just some. 
thing that's, but it's not repaint on slow. What, what kind of images are those? Oh, I just purchased something. Come <laughs> 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 on, pay up. <laughs> what were you saying, Tom, before I ruined your train of thought? Mm. Uh, so but there's not a sc scroll handler running. So this is a this is a, a baffling one to me. Um, we know, but I, I think the thing that I would chase is this paint storm. So if I were to like sit down, I'd fi I'd probably. Now you have the bar back. Oh, I have the bar back. Yeah. Um, but the paint storm was still there when I hit the bar, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so if I do that and hide that, uh, I think we mentioned this maybe, but H H is a hotkey in in Inspector. It's really useful for chasing this stuff. Uh, usually, it, where did it go? <coughs> Doing this on a small monitor is fun. If you hit H, that hides. Uh, it puts this inspector hide shortcut, and that puts a visibility hidden on it, which often will help chase down the paint storms. You've got to have some position fix thing that's over everything. Let's try hiding shit. I think one, one point that's worth underscoring that, that Matt's doing here is that just like when you investigate a functional bug and you want to reduce a test case when you have a big uh, when you have a big page like this for investigating a performance bug you want to do the same thing and basically like keep deleting things until the performance that. problem goes away and kind of life at it. I, I hid the whole goddamn document and it still repaints. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. Oh John, where are you? <laughs> so good one. So I, I think that's as far as we can go with that one, to, to, totally honest. Um, tracing will tell you where the time's going at first. And then you saw that what we do is either we decide that it's a Chrome, a structural bug in Chrome, right? Uh, so if I, if I did, if you'd thrown me something that was like a mouse drawing app, what you'd find is that the threads are all relatively idle. So like um, this is a fun one to look at. Just uh, if, I, if I do this one in tracing, uh, you know, the other way that this could have gone, right, is that you'll see that the, 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 the thread is actually idle, but then you'll see structural problems. So you'll go, hey, this is, this is idle, but why did you draw twice? You know, or why is, why, why is this so huge, right? And so that, then you'll go down some other route uh, with, with the analysis. So this one went down the the, there was a lot of painting. We saw a lot of painting, and then we started trying to figure out why is that invalidating? What's wrong with that? The other thing we could have done, incidentally, uh, is wonder why this is so slow to paint, which would have been we pop open Ski Debugger, and we start looking at what's in, the, what's in those ops that look suspect that would cause such a huge paint in the beginning. So, Anybody got a load time one to torture James with? Yeah, actually, I think this session only goes until 5. Oh, so did we end, are we done? Yeah. Oh, you, you, you lucky. <laughs> All right. Well, that was fun. Thank you. <laughs>